God, we're just very thankful. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for these days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
law enforcement's funny because we are so cynical that I didn't go to church. I didn't go to church for probably 10, 12 years because the people that I went and saw in that church, on the next day, we were arresting for something it seemed like all the time. And, and that was a really crummy excuse for me not to go to church. That was me judging. That was me not being a good Christian. That was me not walking the walk. And that's what I, what, what I talked about, or what I called the scripture, to, or the sermon today, was walk the walk. And I thought, so let's go back. Who, who walked the walk? Well, Jesus did. Jesus didn't just say it. He did it. He walked the walk. Now, in life, do we believe people that tell you they can do something? Or do we believe people that you see do something? And you watch them, and they're that role model for you. Walk the walk. Derek Roy wants that video. He wants to see that. And I get that. So I, so I go back, and I'm thinking, okay, so if I was in law enforcement back at that time, I bet the, the pharaoh would be knocking on my door at the sheriff's department saying, hey, you need to go take care of this Jesus guy. I've got a complaint. I got a complaint on him because... This guy is going around telling people he's a healer. He's telling people that he, he's the son of God, and he's not. I want you to look into this. I need, I need you guys to arrest this guy for, for what? Fraud? So then I had this interesting discussion and, and thought with, with Russ about, okay, but wait a minute. What if people just doubt in Jesus, that Jesus exists? And, and, I, and I got to thinking, wait a minute. There's too much proof that the guy actually existed. And whether you believe he was the Son of God or not, he existed. He was a man who existed. So that, that we know. Even the Muslim faith believed in Jesus. They didn't think he was the Son of God. They thought Jesus was a prophet in the Muslim faith. And, you know, I almost want to get out the soapbox on this one because... <laughs> do it! <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is my soapbox on Muslim faith. <laughs> and I had to write this down because I wanted to get this right. In Muslim faith, the greatest honor you could do as a Muslim is you could die for Allah. You can die for him. And men, if you die for Allah, you get 72 virgins. I don't know about women, but guys, hey, that's a good deal. <laughs> I'm thinking, right? But you know what I want to say to those guys? It's okay. You go ahead and die for your God. You, to honor your God, you die for Him. You die for Allah. My God died for me. That's right. Confession is, it's 99.999% accurate. 
Because it is a proven fact that when people are dying, they don't lie. They tell the truth. Proven fact. Now, <clears throat> that was one of the things I enjoyed about, about the job, is I liked sitting on the other side of the table and, and talking to people and getting that information out of them. And that people will, will, will all lie. I mean, <laughs> if back into a corner a lot of times and you're, you're facing trouble, you, you're going to lie. I mean, that's just, just a fact. But Jesus didn't lie. He was incapable of lying. He was perfect. So then I got to thinking, okay, but we're going to have to find just a little more evidence in one way or the other. So I thought, you know what? I want to research on how the disciples died. This is interesting, too. Peter. How did Peter die? He was crucified on an upside-down cross. He would not denounce his faith in God. He told his tormentors that he felt unworthy to die in the same way Jesus did. That guy walking along? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. James. He was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. They throw him 100 feet off the southeast pinnacle of the temple when he refused to refuse God. <clears throat> and he lived. So you know what they did? They went down and they beat him to death because he refused to denounce God. <clears throat> Ironically, as I was reading, this is the same pinnacle where Satan took Jesus during his temptation. Which I did not know. John. Oh, this is a fun one. They threw John in a vat of boiling water. Tell, they would not let him out until he would say that he did not believe in God. He didn't ever say it. They eventually, his screams, they eventually took him out and they put him in prison. And where he stayed in prison and wrote the book of Revelations. You know why he didn't die in the water? Because God wasn't done using him yet. He had to have him write that book of Revelations. He died an old man. <clears throat> Andrew, this guy's my favorite guy in death. Andrew was also crucified on an X-shaped cross. After being beaten by seven soldiers who tied him to a post upright to prolong the beating in his life so he could feel more pain. The whole time, you know what Andrew did when he was on that cross? He was asking God to forgive them and praying for them, preaching to them. And in his last breath that he says, I have long desired and expected this happy hour. And it's funny because us as humans, the worst possible fate that we could ever have is death, right? That's the worst possible thing. And, you know, you, you, you see a car crash, hey, did anybody die? Oh, you know, it's so, so and so, is he okay or is he dead? You know, I'm, I'm in really bad shape because so and so died. Guys, Man, that's, that's, if you have lived your life correctly and you believe in Jesus, it is assured to you that you're going to heaven. That's the greatest honor ever. Amen. So, when you think of death and that, it's just the door. It's not the, it's not the end. This is what we've been waiting on. This is what we're marching toward. Matthew was killed in Ethiopia for preaching God's word. Thomas, stabbed by a spear during a missionary trip to church of the Southern Continent. Nathaniel, beaten by a whip in Asia for preaching. Paul, tormented and beheaded by the evil Emperor Nero for denying God, for not denying God. Prior to this, Paul had written, uh, written several documents that we go by today. Bartholomew, there's no record of how he died. Philip, there's also no record. Jude, they hung him. And of course, Judas killed himself right after right after uh, Jesus was crucified. Those guys, to me, guys are walking the walk. All those guys are walking the walk. I'm not. And that motivates me to start doing that. That motivates me to want to be better. We're, we all come in here, if we want to go to church today, what did it, what was the what was the skin off your back? Was there any problem with coming to church? Did you have to, were any soldiers out there with swords <laughs> swinging at you? Were there guys pelting rocks at you as you walked in? No. 
We're free to worship. Back then, they weren't free to worship. Back then, if you believed in God, it was a darn good possibility you're going to be boiled or my personal favorite, this whole cross thing. <laughs> but that does not sound like a good way to go. <clears throat> you know, I know that we, we, you try to put value in what, what you do, and you know, I know we all fall short of, of what we could probably we could probably do for God. And I'm ashamed of that, personally. I am ashamed of that. You know, and I, I have heard, oh, I've heard a couple times that, you know, people that I have talked to, get you on know, to Russ about going to, going to bars or where he was hangs out as a person. And I said this, if it wasn't for him coming to a bar, I wouldn't be here. Just wouldn't be. Jesus wasn't afraid to go to anyone. Jesus talked to the tax guy, I'm going to say. <laughs> Back then, that's like, it's like going into the IRS and saying, hey man, I've made some stuff. <laughs> You're just hanging yourself. And God says, you know, that we will doubt him at times, and that that doubt is normal. And, and that's, you know, I picked this scripture today in James, if you want to read long, it's in the bulletin. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed in the wind. And to me, I'm thinking, is it that easy? Yeah, it is. It is that easy. If you believe and you ask, you will receive. It's that easy. Believe, ask, receive. Now this answer may not come in your time. It's going to come in God's time. I'll cross you there. But it will come. I guarantee you it will come. God will answer your prayer in His time. And what I want to work more better at is being that disciple for God. It is our obligation as Christians to bring people to church. If we all just brought one person to church, our congregation doubles. We, we have to be diligent in spreading the word of God. You know, I want to go to heaven. I want to take all you guys with me. I want to be sitting in a room with you guys going, man, weren't you glad we went all those times? Weren't you glad we believed? Weren't you glad we stood strong? Weren't you glad that we didn't listen to everyone else? Weren't you glad that we didn't get caught up in the world? Weren't you glad we believed? I think that, uh, you know, when you step back and, and put it into perspective, just we're pretty, we're pretty blessed to be able to, to gather. And we're really blessed to to live in a country where we can worship our own gods, um, whatever that may be, whether you agree or disagree. And I think the point is to the, the, of my message today is this. When it comes time that I am standing in front of God, me personally, none of you are going to be there. None of you can testify for me. None of you can say, hey, yeah, but he did this for me. Or none of you can say, but, well, you know, this heart was in the right place. So really, at that time, I could care less what anybody thinks about me personally. Because it really doesn't matter. And I hope each and every one of you have that same exact thought in your mind. Because it doesn't matter what anyone thinks of you. You have to answer to one person. And that person's God. And I hope that when you go, and I hope when you meet Him, and you will, I hope that you have the ammunition in your pocket to say, I was that guy. I was that disciple. I did walk the walk. We, I didn't want to be a part-time Christian. I wanted to be a Christian. I didn't want to just worship God on Sunday. I try to read my Bible as much as I can. And actually, my wife's a lot better at it than I am sometimes. And I'll find myself too busy. And I don't want to have to 
give him that answer when the time comes. Hey, God, I was busy. Man, I had to, I had to work out that day. And I had to work on God's hand. I was busy. <laughs> That's stuff to do, Lord. And I don't want, like I said, I don't want anyone else to find themselves in that predicament. predicament. So do me a favor and walk the walk. And be his disciple. Let's get people to come to our church. Let's see them. What, let's tell them. Show them what this is about. And not even just this church. Go to any church. Find God. You can do it at home. And you can do it your, your own. But it's not the same. I didn't go, for, like I said, I didn't go for years. I was revolting against it. I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed of that.